Thank you for coming out. Uh, did many people fly here today, or I guess yesterday or today? It, it isn't, isn't travel as an anarchist a special kind of hell? <laughs> Don't you find that? I mean, I came from Canada. The free market took me 3,000 miles in the same time as it took the government to take me about 300 yards. My vision at the time I started PayPal 99 was that we would get rid of all central banks you know, overnight. Uh, it's taken a little longer than I expected. I was optimistic about that. Um, but I, I, do think, um, I do think that to the extent it becomes easier for people to shift out of one currency into another, um, that is a very powerful, um, that's probably something that will make it much harder for governments to inflate and debase currencies. Uh, undermining the false concept of a state. I, the whole talk should be nothing more than, well, how do we show that the state isn't real or there is no state or that government is illegitimate? I should only have to get up here and just say, well, the means are not consistent with the end. Good night. And that's, that should be all I have to say. Right? You know, but to most people in this crowd, that, that should be all I have to say. Uh, but unfortunately, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of uh, conditioning and whatnot. Because how many people went to public school? One of the central facts of human reproduction is it is a wise child that knows its father. And if you think about the institutions by which human beings have organized mating, again, through all the societies we know about, almost all of them are organized in a way designed to let men know whether a child is theirs. That's why you normally have either monogamous or polygynous, but only very rarely polyandrous marriages because if the only way prior to modern times that a man could be sure of paternity was if he was the only man who had sexual access to the mother of the child. No longer true. Doesn't take a wise, uh, a wise child. All it takes is a decent lab. Well, you don't have to be a historian to notice that the federal government has been gaining ground year after year, while American liberty has been yielding ground year after year. American political history has confirmed the truth of what I call the Jeffersonian principle of government. The natural progress of things is for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. Now this is an observationally verifiable principle of political government. This means, most importantly, that you can independently of Jefferson or anyone else observe this principle to be true. In uh, the area of law enforcement, private uh, firms that provide protection services are actually protecting. They're trying to prevent the crime from happening, whereas police, their incentives are to let the crime happen and then react afterwards by pursuing uh, the offender because, uh, like any bureaucracy, they have to have something to count uh, to show that they're important. and one of the main things they count is numbers of arrests. Well, it's not going to come as a late-breaking bulletin to libertarians that people thrive when they're free to act autonomously. But the gratifying thing is that a great deal of psychological research backs this up. From a Maslow's self-actualization and Rogers' fully functioning person to the somewhat newer self-determination theory, um, Psychology tells us that acting autonomously and believing that you're acting autonomously is extremely beneficial to psychological health and well-being. The dollar is worth less than four cents on the dollar. So we either have 160 without the Federal Reserve Act and we have less than four cents after, which is a factor of 40. Inflation constitutes theft by the government. question often comes up, well, don't you need eminent domain to lay out a route? Uh, and the interesting case of the El Paso Gas Company, at the turn of the century, they laid out a lot of routes of, of gas lines, and they never used eminent domain. Do you know how they did it in that case? And there may be other ways, too, that they might have done it. But what they did, they set out the two points that they wanted to connect, and then worked out three alternative routes, that any one of which would work. And then they let the word out to the landowner, the property owners, along all three routes. 
we will deal with the first group that comes together with the, uh, <laughs> with the options for their route. And then they step back and let the landowners, especially their neighbors, know, come on, come on, we got to do this, we got to get money for our rights of ways and so on. And we never had a problem. Uh, looking at liberty in comics, <clears throat> there was a, a sort of a revolution in comics in the late 1960s when the counterculture came together in San Francisco and uh, some cartoonists wound up going up there and started publishing uh, so-called underground comics. Uh, Zap number zero was one of the first. Uh, my favorite from the era is, is Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers, uh, written and drawn by Gilbert Shelton, uh, concerning three uh, hippies that uh, were pretty hardcore potheads. And a lot of their stories involved uh, dealing with the cops or not getting caught by the cops or, you know, dealing with the various aspects of working in the black market. They were, some, they were the, like, like the first agorists. You have a decent amount of control over turning on and off certain genes. They did a study over about three months of certain lifestyle manipulations that you can do, and they changed the activity of 500 genes, and, uh, including inflammation, which is a critical one for life extension. So, what does that mean? Your D you know, it's not really true that your DNA is your destiny, at least when it comes to health and longevity. You have more control than you think. Never before have men and women been able to communicate with almost any other person in the world, regardless of distance and almost without cost. This is a completely new, deeply intimate, and immensely hopeful set of abilities, and far too serious to allow anyone to control especially politicians. I've gone into court and, and I've gone into depositions. I've done it on the phone and I've, I have a certified copy of the Constitution and I, I lay it out and I, what is it? Yeah. It's the supreme law of the land. It's what it says. What it is it though? And then you, you tell them, well, it's four pieces of paper. Well, oh, well, yeah. Okay. I have in the book a Richard Kennedy there's a the IRS district council said to me, you want me to say the Constitution's a piece of paper. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> well, I think whether it's true or not is re what's relevant. It may be stupid, but is it true or not? So what's really stupid is you think four pieces of paper from 230 some odd years ago gives you and your client a right to my client's house. Now that's stupid. Sign up put forward to you that the state manifests as hierarchical, but the state is in fact horizontal. The state is in fact horizontal. How many people here have gone to jail for their beliefs? Very few, very few. How many people here have experienced social attack, condemnation, rejection, scorn, hostility, Everybody who's not raising their hands is either not putting their ideas forward or lives in a place that I want to move to.